Okay, picking up where I left off again, still discussing genocide, discussing the Israelite military campaign against the Canaanites, and now I'm focusing solely my attention on uh, Deuteronomy chapter 21, uh, chapter 21, verses 10 through 14. To me, this is the verse that's brought up the most when you discuss the Canaanite or the uh, Israel's military action against the Canaanites. Um, I've already uh, read the passage and I've already gone through it point by point. If you missed that, I would encourage you to look at the last video. I'm just going to pick up with some things that I've seen some skeptics say about this this uh, this particular passage. One skeptic stated, "By God's instruction, inhabitants of their land of an, of their inheritance were completely destroyed by the Israelites, men, women, children, and livestock." Other outlying cities were not not directly uh, not directly in the Promised Land had a choice to surrender into slavery or face warfare, in which males were killed, but the women, children, and cattle and other spoils of war were plundered. This is just not true. This analysis is not supported at all, or or any of the scriptures, nor is it supported by any legitimate scholar. The statement is apparently based upon on the skeptic's opinion of Deuteronomy 21, which is twisted if it is used to support the skeptic's argument. Actually, most of the inhabitants of the land were deported. They left their, they left on their own, and those who stayed were usually the political or social hierarchy, the kings, the, royal, the royalty, and their armies of the Canaanites. If they chose to stay, they were killed, and they were responsible for their own deaths and the deaths of their families. I point out, um, as I've already pointed out in previous um, uh, videos just how bad these people were. They were known for child sacrifice. They were known for murdering their own children. They were known for kidnapping children from surrounding nations and, and enslaving, sacrificing them as well. Since they stayed in the land despite multiple warnings to leave, they were killed and unfortunately so were their children. It, it, it was their, the Canaanites' choice. It should be pointed out that children oftentimes, and I've already pointed this out in the last video, that children oftentimes suffer the result of evil parents. The children of substance abusers don't often experience the material benefits of others. The material benefits are spent on alcohol and drugs. The children of physically abusive parents suffer bodily and psychological harm. The children of violent cr criminals often end up fatherless or motherless. They suffer the consequences of the parents' sin and their victims and their victims solely of their parents. Now, what was Israel supposed to do with the children? If the parents who were evil and apparently stubborn were killed, were the Israelites supposed to spare the children with an average age of six or at least under twelve, homeless, without shelter, in shock, without food, without nurture, in grief, in terror, without protection from wild animals, without protection from marauding bands of slave traders, without protection from each other, without adult guidance, how long would they survive in the wild? The, the Israelites had no resources to care for them or to, to route them to other nations. What kind of slow death would this be? The situation of non-combatants in the ancient Near East was different than it is in modern day warfare. Remember, there was, there, there was no United Nations or Red Cross in ancient times. Okay, And that's why it's difficult to label these, these types of uh, war tactics as war crimes in ancient Near Eastern warfare. As far as women is concerned, uh, Deuteron Deuteronomy 21 is a remarkable protection of of rights of captive women. By the way, um, skeptics should take a, take the time to read Numbers 25. It seems God had had his had the Israel had Israelites put to death for having sexual relations with foreign women outside of a marriage relationship. This 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 passage, Numbers 25, essentially blows the argument out of the water as far as as trying to to imply that Deuteronomy 21 supports the rape of foreign women. The only way a Hebrew could know a captive woman was as, was if she were to become his wife. This isn't right by any definition. There are many limitations on Israel which were unprecedented for the day placed upon them by God. Um, as far as cattle slaughter is concerned, uh, I'm assuming that's a reference to 1 Samuel 15, which which is has to do with the Amalekites, and, and this had nothing to do with the Canaanite military campaign, and I'll discuss that a little bit later when I get into the Amalekites. As I said, and as I've pointed out in the last couple of videos, um, the Amalekites, well, the Amalekites had nothing to do with the Canaanites. Uh, this has nothing to do with the actual de deportation of the Canaanites. Notice I said deportation, not genocide. By the way, three and a half percent of the Canaanites were killed, unlike, you know, unlike what we see, say, um, 
what Hitler did to the Jews in World War II, which nearly 60% of the Jewish population was murdered. Furthermore, Israel was driving out the Canaanites. Israel was more concerned about taking the land. If the Canaanites just left, which many did, then they were spared. Israel did not, did not hunt them down, or, or, or hunt them down as, as, as what is often seen, and, and, and <clears throat> I'm losing my voice. And it's what is often seen in most most uh, military uh, campaigns that, that that are actually defined as genocide, such as such as the Jews in World War II. Uh, the, you know, the Nazis hunted them down in other countries. That's not what the Israelites did. And those, um, the Canaanites that were killed were in Canaan, were were in Canaan in the course of battle. To begin with, um, also the skeptic brings up outlying cities. Um, were destroyed during the conquest. Um, Israel was not allowed to destroy cities, cities or buildings, Deuteronomy 6:10, and they were not supposed to destroy the vegetation or trees, Deuteronomy 2019. And they were restricted from attacking Esau's land, which is what's an outlying city, Deuteronomy 2:4 through 6. They were restricted from attacking Moab, Deuteronomy 2:9. They were restricted from attacking Ammon, Deuteronomy 2:19, and they were never allowed to take the cultic objects or plunder. Which which would have had the precious metals and stone Deuteronomy seven twenty five to twenty six, okay. Um, if if we're referring to plunder, however, um, uh, the only plunder that we know of is in Deuteronomy twenty ten through sixteen, which which was Eden. So obviously the plunder there is the livestock. Um, that's the only plunder they were allowed to take. They were required to offer peace to nations at a distance, Deuteronomy 20, 10 through 16. So again, you know, to, to, to accuse Israel of, of waging war without, uh, with nations outside the Promised Land, I don't quite understand the objection from the skeptic. I pointed out in, in an earlier video that, um, uh, oh, I lost my, um, there were restrictions on how Israelite, on how the Israelites were to behave and how they were to treat female captives of war, which is what we just discussed. Scholars have noted that Deuteronomy 21 um, was, was, ha have noted that this was unparalleled benevolence towards women in ancient Near Eastern warfare. So obviously this was not a war of unrestrained lust, greed for expensive goods, or even empire building. God did not tolerate those attitudes. As I've already stated in a previous video, in Joshua 7, an Israelite did take some of the expensive idol pieces, and God held the entire community responsible for the breach. In conclusion, uh, judgment is, call, is called God's strange work in the Old Testament prophets. What for us humans are, are a problem of why does God not do anything about evil and cruel people is simply the other side of his patience with us. He hopes that we will accept the love of truth and commitment and value and love. He deliberately believes the best, 1 Corinthians 13. What started out as an unfair genocide of the Canaanites ended up, a, up as a less than they deserve punitive deportation from the land, filled with patience and mercy and second chances. It was, not, it was, a, not, was nonetheless a judgment and nonetheless involved death, as it later would be repeated upon Israel. Far from being a genocide of the innocent people for, hung, for land-hungry Israelites, it was instead a firm yet just and even little merciful to the masses, removal of a people from attractive land, mostly through migration. Um, I'm going to conclude um, my look at the Canaanite invasion in the next video, and then I'm going to start looking at the Amalekites in 1 Samuel 15. Thanks.